Okay, good evening, everybody. I hope you can all um, hear me. My name's uh, Juan Cruz. I'm the Dean of Fine Art here at the Royal College of Art. And it's my pleasure to welcome you to the first in our Visual Cultures lecture series for the 2014-15 season. This is the third year of the Visual Cultures lecture series. It was established in order to enable us to produce new knowledge with the world's leading artists and thinkers. Previous speakers have included Thomas Hirschhorn, Lucy Orta, Gerard Byrne, Ulla von Brandenburg, Mark Leckie, and Laura Provel. We use the lectures as a means of addressing questions pertinent to our understanding of art and culture and its broader context today. Our guest speakers, distinguished artists, writers, curators, and academics are carefully selected and invited to speak about their work in relation to a given line of inquiry. Each season's lectures, together with the related seminar and workshop activity, contribute towards a body of material which is collated as a source of new insights in the field and made available within the college and to our broader community. And we're working on a publication um, around this series on the basis of the lectures. Um, so this season's series, Contemporaneity and Other Tales, will consider the question of contemporaneity framed as an investigation of an ephemeral and ungraspable concept, always to be redefined within the production, circulation, and reception of artists' work. The series intends to provide a critical overview of what it means to produce culture today, giving an insight into the complex fabric of artistic production. Before we move on, I'd like to thank my colleague, uh, Anne Dufo, uh, with whom I've worked on the series, for her knowledge, insight, persistence, and tact in thinking through and putting together a wonderful program, which will include Joseph Kasuth in conversation with Hans Ulrich Obrist, Mishka Mirkan, Susan Hiller, and Saskia Sassen, as well as potentially a few others who we're still trying to pin down. Um, I'd also like to thank This Is Tomorrow, who are uh, broadcasting these series. Um, so today I'm, I'm delighted and extremely proud to welcome Richard Tuttle as the first speaker in this year's series, which is in London to open an extraordinarily diverse pair of exhibitions of his work at the Whitechapel, I Don't Know, The Weave of Textile Language, an enthralling retrospective of the work spanning five decades. At Tate Modern, he's undertaken one of the most prestigious and challenging commissions in art today, the Turbine Hall. Um, and I'm sure he'd want me to credit here Magnus Av Pettersen, the chief curator of the Whitechapel Gallery, and Akim Bochart Hume, head of exhibitions at Tate Modern, who've worked with him towards these exhibitions. Uh, when we heard Richard would be in town, we set about straight away to try and contact him, uh, indelicately perhaps, given his heavy workload while he's here. Um, and we were helped to do so with enormous generosity of spirit by Ivana Blaswick and Sophia Victorino at the Whitechapel Gallery, to whom we're extremely grateful. And we're also grateful to colleagues at Tate for collaborating with the Whitechapel to bring Richard to London. I'd also like to thank Stuart Shea for Modern Art for helping us to make this lecture happen. Richard Tuttle was born in 1941 in Rahway, New Jersey, and educated at Trinity College, Hartford, Connecticut, graduating in 1963. His first significant show was Richard Tuttle Constructed Paintings at the Betty Parsons Gallery in New York in September 1965. And in the intervening 50 years, he's exhibited his work around the world at the most distinguished galleries, museums, forming part of major international collections and with an established and singular presence in the canon of contemporary art. I first came across Richard's work as a student in the late 80s. I was at art school trying to make works with lines and the tutor told me about this artist who'd made a series of works attaching a wire to the wall by its two ends then tracing the line of the wire with a pencil onto the wall resulting in three lines, the wire, the pencil and the shadow. This seemed a flabbergastingly simple way of doing what I was straining to do with such clumsiness. A friend of mine, an artist who's also a great admirer of the work, has said that you just can't copy Richard Tuttle's work and that it's difficult to be influenced by him and not to find yourself simply making his work. And one might argue that that quality that makes an artist's work so influential but unrepeatable is what marks out a certain specialness and even greatness. I think it's also very difficult to write about Richard's work. I tried myself foolhardily to do so when I reviewed an exhibition of his at Camden Art Centre for Art Monthly in 1996. Reading over that text, it seems I was really taken by a sense of something called rightness in the work that I struggle to express in all but this line, which still rings with some truth. This is not to speak of a rightness in composition, as if to say that all the pieces work perfectly, but to suggest that Tuttle has a faith in his decisions and, his, and in his hand that comes across in the works as something almost accidental. Decisions so right that it is as if they have not ever been made. As well as delivering this lecture, Richard kindly agreed to undertake a workshop with four of our students yesterday at the Whitechapel, which I understand uh, went very well. Um, it strikes me that the influence of Richard's work on young artists today is stronger than it's ever been. And given my experience, I would urge some caution. I think it's much, much harder than it looks uh, to be influenced by Richard Tuttle's work. It does seem quite extraordinary and, I imagine, challenging for work that is so particular now to be so widely esteemed and regarded. Richard's work makes a fundamental contribution to our theme of contemporaneity. 
This is a theme that can, of course, be defined in many ways, from the political to the theoretical, the sociological to the historical, and even the biological, and subsequent speakers in our series will do just that. Richard Tuttle, though, is an artist whose work, I think, vividly articulates the moment of its own making, an artist whose work always retains a singularity of purpose about the truth of the moment of its creation. It seems to revel perpetually in the contingent and somehow ungraspable moment when it enters the world, the moment or idea that we term here as the contemporary. I hope that doesn't sound too essentialist. As I said, it's very hard to write about the work, um, even I imagine for Richard himself, who I'm very sure you're keen to hear from. So I hope you'll join me in welcoming Richard Tuttle. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Um, um, <clears throat> oh, good. Okay. Um, all right. Uh, yes. Um, okay. <laughs> we, uh, I think, uh, we'll have a repeat uh, of a uh, limited number of images. Um, and, uh, oh, well I see I can, I can read this very well. Okay, uh, was this light? Uh, um, <coughs> I, uh, uh, this is, uh, I told uh, Juan, and, and, uh, and by the way, there's a beautiful introduction, and I, I, I thank you, and, and, and Anne as well, um, that uh, uh, this is, uh, you're going to get the last drop of Richard Huddle <laughs> after <laughs> <laughs> this six weeks of, of uh, <coughs> I mean, uh, the job is uh, is y you are supposed to stay on the level of your creative energy, your creative self, for six weeks straight. Mm -hmm. uh, that might be hard, but when we're all the normal, is we have physical energy and intellectual energy, and so on, those are you put them aside. This is not going to help you do your job. You know, the only thing that's going to help you do your job is, is to stay on that level of, of creative energy. So this is the last drop of creative <laughs> energy <laughs> that, that I have. I'm going home to New Mexico, and I'm just going to be with my dog and walk in the, w in the woods for the next month. Um, anyway, um, I, I, I love this point of the contemporaneous. Uh, uh, that's a, uh, I do f uh, feel the work is a thousand percent committed to the contemporary, and that's uh, very difficult because uh, we're uh, uh, so um, seduced by the future and, and attracted by the past, uh, but it's in the contemporary where anything that's important to us actually can happen and does happen, and uh, there are, um, you know, there are different ways to get to the contemporary. Uh, but you know, the art or the art that I'm interested in is uh, one of one of them. So I'm delighted to uh, contribute to the theme, uh, the overarching theme of this year's uh, lectures. Um, and I also was fascinated in one, one's uh, uh, introduction that uh, the, the notion of constructing culture. And I think as, as an a American, um, you know, in such a, 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 you could say, melting pot, or, or uh, that the uh, uh, culture is always something that's um, it's supposed to be here, but it's going to be in the hands of some other uh, group or the uh, and and the the notion of uh, that art uh, or the w say the work that uh, uh, people do in the direction of art uh, one uh, is creating a culture uh, but two I, I don't know why I picked up that idea but the but culture is something that needs creating you know you need to uh, keep uh, uh, it's not refreshing and renewing. It's that that the in order to have culture, you somebody somehow you know has to take up a job, which is creating what culture is. I mean, culture is also hard to define, but one of the ways you can define it is by doing it, and in doing it, you're also 
uh, attaching uh, not just a cultural experience uh, that's nearby, but uh, I suspect you can also attach to other cultures and in history and so on and so on. Um, so uh, that's a, um, I already feel <laughs> uh, I, I got a lot out of this evening by uh, thinking that uh, uh, having a, a, a definition of, of culture that's uh, vital and alive and um, uh, and it's freeing. I, 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 f I feel uh, freed by that idea. And, and, yeah. and OK, so um, this is, uh, uh, I'm very, very involved at the moment that the, um, that, uh, you know, the, the crust, uh, the actual uh, uh, thing you can call the crust of the earth, which I think we're part of. Um, uh, it's also uh, can be called the ground. Uh, it can be called uh, w ultimately what a sculpture would sit on. Um, uh, that this uh, uh, essential um, How to say that? Uh, well, maybe essential. Uh, the, the 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 essential of which acts as a base uh, is actually language for us. Um, <clears throat> so um, this is a piece I I wrote, and uh, I'm going to uh, I know because this. Uh, um, I'm trying to put this. I'm not a poet. I'm trying to put this writing into a place uh, which it, I think it came out of. Uh, so I'm going to try to read it uh, toward uh, the language uh, that I feel is the foundation, is our and everything of the human world is actually is sitting on. Um, <clears throat> so it's in eight parts, uh, and it is, uh, we're calling it layering, uh, that is uh, the name of the, this lecture. Um, OK, so uh, first uh, section. I know, or think I know, why people think an artist enters the profession. It is about a rise in the world, calamities, successes, patronage, where it comes from. Very often, a morality play thrown in. Untimely death, significant. It would not be so different from a career in the city or Wall Street. And it may not be. The story needs a teller. The teller needs a story. But what if you are the artist? How does this relate to you? The sheer quixotic nature of public taste, the inexplicit nature of inspiration, its recognition by friend and foe alike. Bewilder all who know. Art is more beloved if its source is other. Weight is opposite. Forecast 
gloomy. Take, for example, minor store and ammunition. Guidance precedes recognition. Perhaps story tells us that is good to know. How could the artist survive a story for others to see? Right now, challenges emerge. Maybe the artist must make what is the most challenging and then try to see it. We can use seeing if it is known as a tool by distinguishing between what has this quality and what does not. For the world cannot be outside the challenge of seeing if, in fact, as I believe, we have made the world and still are, we can and must make a world we feel beyond reach. Guards of the democratic must make sure it comes available. The surprise in art is always the surprise in art. But the role of the artist cannot be told. Two, bold and beautiful, creation lies ferment, bosom to bosom, countless cells regenerating all the time. Yet we are like a year in body and in mind. Only spirit passes upwards. The stuff on the ground already. Can I let my spirit play with creation like a child before a weight brings me down? Can I let my struggle be between the gods in me and the gods outside? Let them play, fornicate, roll in slumber, have their tiffs for loving amusement. Then I can love and enjoy this beautiful body. See it as the gate for spirit. Watch hosts of parasitical life. Use it. Be it. And have it become them. Can I let the pain I feel command the feelings. Dizzy me 
into event and sarcasm. And this miserable mind, unless defined otherwise, fail to grasp the easiest prolix, worry the accountant, take me to strange past, past boredom, let it fall apart. I am watching. I cherish every splinter. How could it be if not so? Does love know rules? Don't make it easy for me in your rough decline. Thoughts express some things still too soon. Worry me on these. That makes me closer to the nature of things I don't like. Three, help provision the bystander with the heart, too. Take my share, lessen its light for others. Make it easier somehow. That ideal who stands between a tree and torment, half cartoon, jabberwonky. I'm not saying he too, but he also. See how he crouches to get energy, how multi-million stars cross his face, crouching like him. What you teach me, because you see it, it feels the information I would die without. Even at that moment, you astonish me, humiliate me, confused by my unwillingness to participate in your destiny. No subject is no kindness. Always these lessons. No reader ever wants to know. Go back to your ignorance from where you came. Thank you. You generate my ego, my heart. You know there's a way stories should be told. In silence, Four, the birthplace, lieu de naissance. Where was that place? Somewhat of a non-place, a shifting place. Nothing to do with a real place a place with a name, yet a pretty place, green, swaying grasses, unsatisfied, 
as it is unsatisfying, a wild place, a place for animals, maybe. People have supported the work to the degree they did. How can they ever be repaid? Between seven and eight, there is a departure. Sometime between seven and eight, there will be a departure. No specific time. If it were one time, it not, might not be another. When this happens, that happens. That's a rule. But when nothing happens, because there is no cause, which is more often the case, there is nothing that can happen. Yet in the world of nature, this is not the case. Nature is marching even though we don't see it. Come back in a week. See how the leaves have changed. Come back in a minute. You see nothing. But know nature is in motion. Time and space work the same way. Our perception of it may be what is called apperception, though mind could know. A clock may be about this. You can't see the hour hand move, etc. The shift from not seeing nature's time to not seeing the time of artifice is cushioned by the second hand, I guess. But I always find it annoying, even a lie. Of course, my body behaves nature. The extraordinary experience of moment to moment. Development and passage of time is not found on the clock, or is it? An artificial measure must convince all is available. I remember staring at a clock, hoping in time something would appear. Five. How light falls, even when I'm looking up, becomes material. Circumstances 
were always necessary to see this. It's outrageous not to see this. As if circumstances are not to change. These must be more than circumstance, held beneath like a dragon. But what if St. George were to let the dragon out? What if we are living in the world St. Michael didn't want? How to serve destruction? Killing the landscape, eradicating species, millions incarcerated. What's the difference than killing each other by the millions? Imitation as representation, yet destroy destruction. Who is triumphing? St. George or the dragon? My pleasure, he needs freedom to do what he does is his destruction. To keep up the forms or the masquerade is undeniably pleasure like the light. Six. When weary and abreast of time, scheduling by the instant two Toward serious, rational picking, ferment, breeze, common finding no one mentioned, except it run rounds about Thursday, signing worth the serving, then as then as then come in as ghosts the rents going to rise. It just seemed. It just stopped. It for institutions. That's okay. I don't want you to get nervous. It take tomorrow. It's his collection. It just wants to be rhythmic. We're not starting at the same time. It doesn't do anything by itself. It took Napoleon. I'd span I love new girls. It took time to go. It takes a while to put together shows. She was a painter at the time. There's no business there. Did it take everything? Great. Do we clean the bottom hall? Tomato. It's been called the same for centuries a taste. All 
but previous dawn. Big show just wanted to raise doubt. I can go out now, anytime, in San Francisco. There was mystery. Read history. Was the invention of nihilism. It was a very nice window. We heard that this is a sofa, which is ugly, doing well, have a car, garden uglan. To whom does it matter? Hold this the other red lights in the district. No one ever rolled you so indiscreet. Yet tell you, we're very sensitive to him. Tim Davis, Picasso, he's not supposed to be here then they teach you. I'm wrapped up in Suda to get toast. I'm thinking these stations are stopped. I'm so conscious of my work. What's okay? What's not okay? Find a precious existence. It's talk. There's no way. It's a lot, guys. There's a lot in the shoot. Everything is part of everything. Seven. Heat belongs to pumps. Tonight is going to be a jazz festival at home with friends. It takes a long time, less than three hours. I like him and I like less layers between him and me. Do I know you? Do I know you, it seems? Then the other questions. It's potter, stones, and glass. To put so much emphasis is to put too much emphasis. You are welcome. And in any place, I kept running. I did it for money. Hempstead Heath. Moorgate. It's been a stop, it's glum. This is sort of a new beginning. He really looks out, stands out. Infanta gauze for your poster. Eight. Artist can mean several things. Radical, conservative, ways of being, 
serve the truth, temperament, limitation, connect usages, cover experience. This is my way. Thank you. Thank you very much, Richard. Um, oh, what a relief. <laughs> so Richard has um, uh, kindly agreed to um, take some questions, and we've got a bit of time. Um, I, I want to start by thanking you very much for that. Um, I was sitting there listening to you. Um, wishing I wasn't dreading the moment when <laughs> I'd have to think about a question. I'm asking. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> um, you, you started speaking about language as being uh, a, a kind of fundament, a firmament yeah. that we work with, and that, that seemed like a very. Um, I started thinking a little bit of um, almost kind of Seamus Heaney and the relationship of language to earth. But but as you spoke, and, and as often happens with, with, with your work, that, that, that metaphor, that allusion seemed far too heavy. Um, yeah. And uh, it just struck me when you were speaking that there's something always in, in or always often in, in, in the work and the way you spoke today where, the, where there may be a kind of very deep, very heavy, very fundamental um, allusion or uh, fundament to, to the work and yet, and yet the actual experience of it retains a, a kind of lightness uh, yeah. and an extraordinary yeah. kind of range of uh, elements that, that, that one might more predictably expect to, to disappear. Mm -hmm. from that kind of work. And I just thought that was, that was really uh, palpable in what, in what you said. I don't have a question yeah. other than how do you do it, uh, which is an yeah. impossible <laughs> question to answer. Yeah. Um, other people uh, may have. <laughs> well, I, I, think of, I think of two, two things. Uh, you know, one is <coughs> you know, the, the, uh, they have statistics of the, of the turbine hall. Uh, and, uh, the one that really knocks me out is they, they tell, tell you that it's, it weighs 25 tons. You know. And it, it has that light, what you say, the, the light. I mean, uh, when if I s speak to an architect or a builder or something, they just like blanch because, you know, mm -hmm. it just, uh, um, but of course they know how much the physical things weigh. Uh, and, uh, okay, the other, uh, uh, you know, the, uh, uh, okay. Uh, Okay, that's. I guess we can just uh, move. Is it the biggest thing you've ever made, the turbine hall? Um, well, uh, that this is this is. Uh, I know. I think uh, the, the, the you know the, this is a very special occasion, and I, I think it's a, you know a chance to share. Um, <coughs> the uh, you know, perhaps. Uh, uh, I've said this so many, many times uh, that the making the distinguishment between uh, scale on the one hand and size on the other, um, and uh, these things get confusticated in our daily lives. And you know, we actually use the word scale when we mean size, and use the word size when we mean scale. Um, <coughs> but in uh, I find. Uh, uh, the art, the practice of the artist. You, you know, there are times when you just have to uh, distinguish, make, be very, very clear in distinguishing. So, uh, and I think m almost everyone would agree uh, that the uh, uh, scale uh, is the individual. It's on the individual side of things. There, you, everybody has an uh, individual scale, the same way they have an individual fingerprint. Mm -hmm. And and in fact. Uh, uh, one of the joys of uh, the creative um, dimension, and, and that includes uh, the, uh, the spectator as well as the, the maker, and it includes uh, behind stage and in front of stage, is the, uh, uh, that we can, uh, each of us has the ability to discover our own scale. Um, okay, uh, leave that for a moment. The other side is the 
uh, issue of size, you know, which is a collective. It's just it couldn't be more opposite. Um, it's uh, size is something we have to agree on, or we, you know, here we can have feet or m millimeters or, or so, and that's useful because we all agree on that. You know. So y you have this uh, uh, pattern of singularity on the one hand and, and multiplicity on the other hand. Um, and I think in, um, in a, you know, an artist uh, is, uh, is faced with, I mean, that is a, uh, you know, it's a conundrum. Um, and you just can't accept that people use the words <laughs> interchangeably and it's just all meaningless, you know. And, uh, and so, in the, but in this uh, turbine hall, uh, I mean, I've uh, emphasized from the very, very beginning of my work, it's about scale. It is not about size. Uh, and it's politically enormously important because I, I feel uh, more than ever before we have to fight to respect the individual and the individual uh, is, uh, is constitutional to the society and um, ba -da -da -da. Um, and um, so, um, by that emphasis, of, you know, which is, can be very dramatic. I mean, you can have a three-inch rope piece or you can have a 25-ton piece at the, you know, it's all fine as far as I'm concerned because it's all about scale, you know, and it's all about the individual. It's, and, it, and it shows, for me, it's a, it's a way to say what the individual is, you know. I'm not, you know, the... Uh, 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 what defining individual? I'm an artist. I mean, in a way, I can't define the individual because I'm I'm not like people. I mean, um, but nevertheless, I can point out uh, I individual traits and that that the as far as uh, okay, uh, every individual has the same capacity to move from an you know, the achievement of art in a three-inch uh, piece of rope to a achievement of art in a 25-ton work. And it is extraordinary because the individual is extraordinary, mm -hmm. you know. And I don't see any reason to, you know, e evaporate them into some committee, you know, or, uh, mm -hmm. in a, uh, and ho however, uh, 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 and, you know, it's, it's also, uh, you know, the, I guess a special position of, of, of the art of the artist because you you say it the way you see it and um, and you know they love you they hate you whatever <laughs> but but it's it's uh, 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 the the significant part is that uh, 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 in the <coughs> It's uh, um, how we're, we're going to uh, go and say that. Oh yeah, I, 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 that wasn't clear, but the, um, uh, this talk is called layering mm. because I, f I feel there's certain artists at, out there at the moment who are making work as artists, I mean, are supposed to do to help us uh, um, see ourselves, see the world, uh, make a uh, a best possible relationship. I mean, art is, is a tool, you know, to, to, for life. And uh, you're, it, art should help you to have a better life, make a better life. So right now, uh, most of us, I, th I think, are, uh, of conf our confrontation with our uh, daily, uh, uh, what, um, concrete world in front, uh, has uh, layers. And layers and layers and layers and some the the I think the one of those layers that's back there somewhere might have a problem, and then it makes things not uh, 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 work out uh, the, the the best possible way. Again, the the artist <coughs> you're calling upon your creative uh, dimension. You know when that's not going well, uh, or it's, uh, uh, um, mm, it's, it's too difficult, then um, you, 
you just search for the, a, ca a, a cause for, for that because, mm -hmm. I mean, uh, the creation itself is hard enough. It can, it, in nature would not <laughs> make uh, doing creation uh, uh, also mm -hmm. so difficult. So that means um, uh, we, 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 you know, we, 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 we have to uh, search out. And uh, artists are uh, function uh, to be crit uh, as critics. Uh, uh, unfor I mean, there are other times in the world where where uh, uh, critics are are born and they uh, they function, and artists can uh, use them. But my experience is, you know, I have to, uh, you know, be the critic that for myself. And, mm. yeah. You talk about the quixotic nature of uh, public taste, and maybe there's a, there's a there's there's an element there's a relationship with the quixotic to scale as well in that. Um, <coughs> yeah, the um, uh, is. Uh, um, Yeah, the um, well, that that that's he's a you know I I, li I like I like <laughs> so, so I mean the issue there uh, uh, is is quixotic to to scale. Um, I would say um, actually that I mean okay that's 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 an interpretation perhaps, but. But uh, part of that scale, part of the individual side of things, is that each person uh, has uh, the the right space for them. Uh, we never find it in this world, but we somehow know it's there. That's the basis of the wire pieces you were speaking of, about, because it's a it's a it's a work. It's structured where the artist. Uh, it first of all takes the position, I'm going to work in a way where I remove myself. I'm going to ask the question, how much can I be out of my own work? It's still my work, but how mm. much can I get out? And, you know, other artists use that strategy and it has certain results and so on. I'm not the first, uh, but I think I'm one of the best <laughs> practitioners because what happened is that the, the, in getting outside of my own work, I actually created a space for the viewer. Mm. And, and, and people, I mean, that's, and it's built on that. I, I, because you can, you can tell people uh, uh, do not have the right space for them available. Because if you frame a, a work of art, for example, uh, in a way that gives it its right space. Everybody, well, not everybody, but but you know, people, the interested person can can look at that and take so much pleasure and and as it were transpose the uh, the rightness of space of the artwork onto themselves and for a moment feel they've actually uh, uh, have. Uh, achieve the right space for them. So the wire pieces, you could say, um, uh, work the other way, where, um, the, I mean, the viewer still has to, when they go into that space, they have to in a, as it were, d individualize it. I mean, it's not, um, uh, and in the way you could say, um, it's it's a little bit almost like a spider in a web or something like that that you you make something so i mean uh, i don't know these things are complicated the, the wire pieces in fact uh, are a disaster are a commercial disaster but they 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 support i call them my life insurance because uh they not only uh require me to stay pure to myself uh, and uh, because the, the me, I corrupt or or uh, you can you. I'm not able to make them. I mean, or or if if I were able to make them, you see, they don't work. You know, they just don't work. And then and the other side is that um, they are um, very much attached uh, to the uh, spirit 
uh, side of us, uh, which uh, can, in the best of circumstances, grow and grow and grow and grow through life. Mm -hmm. So one can actually uh, make them better uh, if, uh, um, in, in a sense, I mean, you can sort of, it's maybe diaristic in that sense, but it's like creating a diary for the future, you know, of, of something that, you know, is yeah. uh, very poetic. Huh? <laughs> I'm sure um, people have questions in the audience. Um. It, it's uh, what are they called? Uh, ah. Question, question tree. Yeah. It's very concrete. Oh. <laughs> oh, hold on one second. There's, there's okay. a there's a microphone. Just a very concrete question, since you were talking about the wire pieces. Yeah. Does the same hold true for the um, tissue octagons? Uh, the uh, tissue, the, uh, the uh, cloth, cloth, cloth octagons. Cloth or, I mean, are aren't they, they tissue paper? They, you mean the paper, the paper the octagons. Oct paper oct. There, there are three sets of, of octagons. So the uh, cloth ones, the paper ones, and the wire wire ones, thin wire ones, which I, I I'm happy. <laughs> I spent what like five years of my life doing nothing else except uh, uh, that that form, um, and uh, uh, I. Uh, uh, it's a, um, I don't know, you could say it's like a, a, a discipline. Um, the uh, paper octagonals were, of which there are 12, um, would get so, so difficult to make that I, I would wait a, a month. I would do nothing else except wait for a month uh, until the uh, the day of the full moon, and then uh, at the uh, high noon. So uh, I uh, I would break through and feel I could draw this composition because the compositions are it's I think claims for some originality. I mean uh, it's very very uh, out of fashion to talk about. Composition uh, at the moment, I guess, uh, but um, the I in one sense the um, the octagons are an imposing of uh, one square uh, over another. Uh, this eight uh, pointedness, this eight side, um, could be thought of as uh, two squares, which are superimposed. All right. um, and uh, the um, part of the, the paper octagonals were also uh, in the 12. They're only a thin piece of paper on the wall, but, but they were trying to get closer to the wall by composition. So you, you, this, uh, the composition was based on a presumed center point, and then uh, uh, eight the the eight sides, but also the eight points, and then the tension that could be made between the eight points and this presumed center. The principle of them were, was that they uh, uh, there was no back, no front. They could be on the floor. They could be on the wall, and and it was uh, really an effort an effort to make uh, art to achieve art uh, in a. Uh, uh, in the, a, a way that um, made it more available, uh, uh, and and certainly, you know, if you take something off the wall and you put it on the floor, it just destroys that distinction between those spaces. Um, but then the the pieces themselves, each one of the agenda of them uh, was uh, uh, highly. Uh, Challenging. Um, and this is a when I I, uh, uh, I met my 
my wife, uh, the poet Maymay Bersenberger, uh, we would talk about the difference between uh, morality on the one hand and ethics on the other. Mm. And that, um, <coughs> uh, that uh, we seen, it seemed uh, <laughs> we didn't uh, particularly care about moral issues, but, uh, but we did care a lot about ethical issues because we, both of us are sort of these ivory tower types who really aspire to, to, I mean, in terms of subject, in terms of experience, in terms of uh, art in the world, at the highest, highest, highest level. Uh, and the way to do that is to have uh, ethics in the highest, highest, highest level. And um, uh, so, I mean, the, the octagonals are uh, certainly <laughs> part of but, but, you know, now because there's this interest in my, my work, it, I'm, I'm a little bit embarrassed because, frankly, uh, my ambition uh, is, is lifelong. And, um, and plus I had a, a great dealer. My first dealer was uh, Betty Parsons. Mm -hmm. And she would say, uh, for the real artist, you know, the slowest way is the best way. And so I... I, I always, I had to, the work had to be shown, it had to be in the world, and at the same time, um, I didn't want uh, it to be, um, you know, taken over by the media or the, you know, the market or the, um, and, and to, to give myself, so one of the ways I did that was actually bury uh, content, uh, phenomenally rich content, uh, so deeply in the pieces that most people don't have any any idea uh, what what the uh, levels of content are, are in there, but uh, they were you know it's it's uh, um, I mean I they, I have said that the, my my dream is to is to structure a work of art and with many many uh, layers uh, of meaning and then to see how those layers inter uh, relate and enrich uh, each other, um, and you know I, I'm sorry, but you know people look at a, a something like that, and uh, oh, this is a, that's a nice one to look at. I think. This is a uh, uh, it's one of the uh, pieces called "Hello the Roses," which uh, <coughs> uh, I uh, it, uh, okay. So uh, the challenge. Uh, okay, my, my wife and I uh, met doing a book, collaborating on a book together. And someone, I think someone came along, this is what, 25 years later, and said, well, you know, can you work together again, something. And uh, uh, the, uh, so, uh, this piece uh, uh, came, came out, we made a show in, in Munich. And we, both of us, were astonished because the, the space in the, in the book, uh, original book, was, had grown uh, from something you could see in this sort of space to this enormous uh, gallery mm -hmm. room like that. And it, it was, uh, uh, I, you know, just, uh, uh, I mean, in, in a way, uh, uh, humbling, you know, mm -hmm. very, I mean, the, the love, you know, the love we have for each other uh, is, was visible uh, uh, in that exhibition to a degree that was really made you feel humble in face of that, of mm -hmm. the, your own love. You know. mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Amazing. Mm -hmm. We talked about the, the Betty Parsons Gallery where the first <coughs> show, the first significant show, I think, we mentioned in 65. Mm. And I was thinking, of trying to reading about that, and thinking about it earlier. How, in in a sense, one has maybe um, access through reproduction or even through seeing the actual works to things that you made a long time ago, mm, mm. but one doesn't necessarily have access to the exhibitions. And it seems to me sometimes the yeah. the, the bringing together of your works forms something that is, uh, you know, more than the sum of the parts of the work in a space. That the exhibition itself, yeah. the orchestration of exhibitions, yeah. is significant. You, know, you talk about it as, you know, the yeah. show you just talked about as being, having that emotional significance, perhaps. Yeah. Um, no, I, 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 I do want to pass on to uh, uh, that this, um, um, I mean, one, uh, I totally uh, submit to my work. 
I, I just, I just do. And the only thing good you can say about me is that I do what my work tells me to do. Mm -hmm. That's the, that's, that's the, and yet, okay. At the same time, the, what the work wants uh, is uh, to deal with the fact of being alive uh, uh, in a way that tries to parallel the, 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 that, that, that thing. And <coughs> um, um, there was a, there's an art historian in, in Switzerland who um, got a doctorate on uh, looking at my work from the earliest days and, and making a spiral. And, and then from the center of that spiral, that is you know, going out bigger and bigger, and, and, and that they drew lines, uh, a, a straight line from uh, the center of the spiral. And wherever that straight line coincided with one uh, a line of the spiral, there were similar uh, works appearing. Mm. And so this, this, I mean, I say, I say that in, I just said that the, the other night where, uh, I mean, I'm not interested if you make a painting, you know, or you make a nice show or, you know, you, you have a career or something. You know, the only thing that impresses me is, is uh, your life work, you know. I mean, mm. if you, uh, um, I mean, because, I mean, uh, you know, the only way to succeed in art is in art. Mm -hmm. And you don't know that until the very last minute. And, uh, but I, I, uh, I mean, why I'm impressed at this, this uh, what this art historian discovered uh, is that, uh, I mean, I, uh, is, I, I think I have a chance, you know, to succeed in, in, art, in art, you know, and, and I, mean, I, I couldn't care less if I've succeeded in art, and I, I don't know, I, mean, it's, it's, I, I do, and I'm grateful for, as I said in this talk, you know, yeah. the, the support, you know, it's un, I, it, you cannot repay the, the support that uh, the work has, has had, but on the other hand, uh, it's about, you know, because, it, you know, if any human being succeeds in art, you know, the, the, the value, you know, to, I mean, the, 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 to other human beings, you know, to the culture, you know, to art itself, you mm. know, these values are so, so enormous, you know, anyone who conceives of those values would, would could not do anything except, you know, try to achieve them. Mm. Well, I dare say, you know, it goes both ways. Mm. I'm, I'm, I'm getting to ask a lot of questions, but uh, I'm <laughs> there's one there. And we're trying to stay within the hour, an hour, I guess, or two. We've so got another, yeah, oh, 10 minutes oh, okay, left. Okay. Mm, yeah. Is he allowed? Yeah, he he's allowed, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, yeah um, I've got a question um, in the last part of your um, talk. You uh, said something that was interesting to me in that you talked about a kind of model for an artist or even, even yourself, if I understood, that kind of uh, suspended what seem like a kind of antagonistic ideas of the of the radical and the conservative, oh, yeah. Yeah. and um, this kind of suspension, uh, in a way, kind of produces a, maybe a kind of ambivalence, perhaps. Yeah. And um, so I was wondering if you could maybe kind of talk more about that. And, and I had another another uh, part to the question, which was perhaps um, in my mind this perhaps re relates to the way in which your work always speaks simultaneously about a kind of abstract language and a very um, uh, a language of the decorative, uh, which is also perhaps abstract, yeah. but mm. you know, often not. Um, mm. And even though the, the language seems to be very often at times um, uh, reduced uh, uh, or elaborate um, or abstract, there's a kind of distinct, um, uh, yeah, extremely kind of decorative quality to it. Mm. Simultaneously, so uh, maybe those two things relate, maybe they don't. But um, yeah. Mm. Do okay, <laughs> <laughs> it's not to me. But I'm glad it's not a question to me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, <coughs> yeah. Uh, okay. The um, uh, okay. Um, okay. Uh, yeah. First part. Uh, uh, I'm kind of. A I mean, I can't, you can't believe how much I learned in this last six weeks, you know, that of, uh, 
I mean, uh, it's it's it's. Uh, I mean, at my I I uh, you know my age. I, I mean, I, I I have seen older older artists, and I have been kind of amazed that they they're still talking about their relation with their mother. You know, and they're 93 years old. I mean, <laughs> like I, I mean, don't doesn't that ever end? You know, sort of thing. But <laughs> but you know, that it might see something about the the artist. You know, but but um, <coughs> I uh, okay so. Um, Want to, want to say one. say that the um, okay uh, okay let's let's say uh, you know student of creativity yeah. um, I I consider uh, like one of my hobbies uh, as a student of creativity you know I really like to look at another an ar artist you know I mean any any artist and and. Uh, see how that particular because every, it's different every case you know but it's from nature I'm convinced that that uh, uh, artists are totally na of nature and uh, and just the same way a, a oak tree will look different this time and that time you know that you can enjoy a lot you know d knowing those differences so so uh, one thing okay um, the um, a student of of creativity okay as a student of creativity. One of the things I've noticed uh, is when an artist, uh, you could use the phrase, gets it together, discovers himself, you know, finds their work in the world, you know, at that moment, it's, it's fixed. You know, there's something that's fixed. You know. And that person, uh, and that emergence place, it's, it's going to find, it's going to be on a, a cycle uh, that can be described by, uh, you know, the beginning, the archaic, and the classical, and the rococo, and the so and so. Um, I am uh, uh, someone who is fixed uh, to the archaic, and I will always uh, be uh, that. Okay, because I know that fixedness of it. Uh, and it seems kind of burdensome, and I'm, um, uh, you know, like I mean, to be an artist or something. You, you might think, oh, well, it, you, know, you get free, and it is about freedom. But this part, it's not about not being free. You know, you, um, so um, that makes me jump to the other extreme where I say my job. Uh, is to contradict myself, and so um, and that fits sort of nicely because art is uh, the kind of thing that spans polarities that can't be spanned uh, in in the real world. I mean, you can't simultaneously be funny and be angry, but in an artwork, you can be. And and that and that uh, ability of I mean being uh, uh, creating something uh, which um, uh, I mean th this is uh, one of also one of these truisms where you can't make something unless you can be it. So uh, you can be and and this is a, a human a, a real human problem. You can be. Uh, you know, angry and and laughing at the same at the same time. Uh, I've uh, uh, I've actually ex experienced uh, uh, because I don't know I this notion that uh, integrity you know of integrity and so like you you know as a, as an artist you know have to uh, you know, uh, be pure and so on. But I've actually experienced where you know from moment to moment I. Uh, uh, I go from uh, 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 vitriolic hatred to breaking down with tear love, with tears in my eyes, you know, like that. And like that is not integrity. <laughs> <laughs> so out with integrity. <laughs> it's, it must be something, something else. Uh, but. Um, I, uh, okay, uh, I just, uh, I mean, uh, and the other, uh, another thing I'd, I'd like to, to share is this, this notion that, 
in you know with art and again it's uh, it's broad I mean uh, you don't have to make art you by looking at art and loving art you can achieve the same the same thing but uh, there uh, it does th uh, the nature of the thing seems to be uh, that inside your creativity is the power uh, to create yourself and this is another reason why I'm so, you know, this notion of, of um, um, we say, scale. Uh, because you know, finding your own scale is not the same as creating yourself, but it's analogous. And the person who creates themselves would be more likely to be the person who can find their own scale. And um, I mean, it's, this is not uh, anything new in the world. I mean, basically, it's just a rehash of, of you know, the Greek uh, Socrates uh, saying, know thyself, you know. I mean, mm. it's just, you know, you, I mean, the, the only difference is you happen to be an artist, you know. And so, like, you know, you're, it's, but as far as I'm concerned, that it means you, you, it's even more uh, why you have to know yourself. I mean, you don't want to put up, I mean, in as much as your, uh, your work, uh, comes from yourself. That's the degree uh, to to which it's of interest to another another human being. We had a, a kind of marvelous. I I, I don't know the, the, if the person is in the audience, but there was a, yesterday we had a, a master's class uh, meeting, and uh, you know uh, I uh, I mean uh, when. The, the art experience is, is when, it's almost, it's like vampire or something. I mean, you get, you know, you get something from another, another human being and it, it renews you and enriches you and uh, 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 tells you who you are and who other human beings are and, and all this. It's not mystical, it's art, you know. Mm. And, and that's, I mean, somehow I think we, we know that stuff uh, one of my illustrations is, uh, you know, p everybody says, oh, when a child takes its first step, you know, everybody get, you got the cameras and all that, but what's, you know, and ask yourselves if I'm right or, or wrong with the, uh, but it's, people are more excited when the child picks up a pencil, mm. you know, uh, because that is symbolic uh, that, uh, that the individual of, you know, can, has the ability to create themselves. And and so in the end, uh, as uh, you know, developed uh, human beings, uh, uh, it is it, it's that ambiguity factor uh, that art is very supportive of, uh, where you are at on the one hand uh, a person of, uh, of with two parents and a person who has created themselves. Mm. I think we, yeah, yeah. we have time for one more question. I think there was someone over there. Um, hello. Um, I was just interested in, uh, in, in the fact that y you said that you, you weren't a poet when you introduced what okay. you called a lecture, but um, yeah. sounded to me very much like a poem and a very good poem. So I wondered what distinction um, you were making there or maybe you were mm. it was a, a, a sort of modesty. But no, no, uh, um, it wasn't. And I, I, um, I've, um, I had occasion uh, recently to, uh, uh, you know, read this uh, uh, very important, uh, you know, like you know, father of architecture. Or something. It's, uh, it's called Vitruvius. Uh, he wrote uh, uh, two books on architecture. Uh, he was a main architect for Augustus, you know, the uh, the first uh, Roman Empire emperor. Um, and uh, in his one uh, in his book, he he says that. Uh, I mean, he's talking about architects, uh, but you know, you say your main talent is is architecture, and uh, your. Um, uh, your your talent, your gift a, as a poet, you know, or your gift as a painter, or uh, 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 is is not up to that level. But that's not 
any reason why not to pursue that level. Um, and um, that that, that uh, as, as much as you can do, uh, that will all go into, uh, in, in this case, the architecture. Uh, because I, I have a feeling that very often uh, people think, oh, well, you know, if I can't be the best, I'm not going to do that or something. So uh, I, uh, I'm married to one of the great poets on earth. I, am, I know I'm not a poet, you know, I mean, I, and, but I love poetry, and one of the ways I love her poetry is by trying the best I can to do my own poetry. You know? <laughs> Doesn't that make sense, you know, sort of? <laughs> it's a... Richard, thank you. Thank you very much. We're very pleased we've managed to squeeze the last bit out of oh, you well, in this London yeah, trip. I hope we, we'll have put you off coming back you. again. Yeah, thank you very much. Okay. Thank you. <laughs>